Hawaii was a great place to see and to be when I first got there. You can imagine what it looked like, how beautiful it looked like to a small Texas boy that never seen anything but cotton fields and grain fields. But uh, December the 7th, 1941, that was all changed when Yamamoto arrived. I had the duty that day when my section fell in for muster. The section leader began roll call. We heard a screaming aircraft and moments later a terrible explosion. The hangar beside us, VP-21, received the first bomb that fell in Pearl Harbor. When we ran outside, we seen all our aircraft circling overhead with the rising sun insignia. We knew immediately what had happened. And so many people have asked me uh, what my thoughts were at that time. And there were so many, they're hard to describe, but fear, anger, surprise, whatever. But it so happened that one of my shipmates remembered those a sewer line under construction behind our hangar. And he says, let's go for the ditch, follow me. We all ran, jumped in the ditch. One of the pilots seen us, strafed the ditch with machine gun fire, missing us by probably three feet. He hit the dirt piled up beside the, the ditch. I can still see this gentleman making his approach with the canopy open and a leather helmet flapping in the breeze. I'll never forget it. When we came out of the ditch, I could look up uh, from where we launched our aircraft in the water. It was Battleship Row. Seen the Arizona, Nevada, West Virginia, Tennessee, Maryland, Pennsylvania, uh, California, Utah, all had been torpedoed, all were smoking, uh, all uh, sinking, the Arizona was really sinking. Seen the Oklahoma turn turtle up. And at that time, I seen devastation and, uh, and uh, turmoil that I'll never forget. I seen seamen jumping off the ships jumping into water that was covered with oil and on fire. Most of them died in the water. Some of them died when they reached the beach. I'll never forget it. When the turmoil first started, martial law was declared all over Honolulu. Blackout was uh, also uh, called all over the islands. And uh, machine gun pits constructed from sandbags that had been set up all around Ford Island. Two shipmates and I manned one of them for three days and nights. We had no idea where the Japanese fleet were or if they planned on returning. But every ship noise and every aircraft noise we heard we knew it was them coming back. Fortunately, that didn't happen. On the fourth day, we were allowed to return to our barracks. All lockers had been broken open to retrieve uh, white clothing for bandages. And we were given a postcard at that time with two inscribed inscriptions. One of the first ones says, I've been wounded. The second one said, I'm okay, don't worry. My mother received this card 14 days later. When I seen my father, sometime later, he said my mother was hysterical during that time. She got on her knees and prayed to God. If he would save her son, she'd spend the rest of her life working for the church, and she did. Three or four years ago, I've been back to Pearl Harbor many times on December the 7th, you know. I was signing, uh, I was signing uh, autographs out there, and a gentleman come by and uh, he asked me where I was in the Navy. I told him Fort Island, VP 23. 
He says, that's my squadron. Of course, that was about 50 years later. So, you know, it's a, just things like that. that uh, it's, uh, it's very, uh, well, it's unique and it's, uh, it's very pleasing to, to meet someone that way. They need to remember Pearl Harbor. They remember, need to remember the war. Uh, for God's sakes, we need to do everything we can to let it not happen again. And uh, I tell all these young folks in school that to stay in school as long as they can, learn uh, everything they can. And I tell them that, you know, uh, education was not as necessary when I grew up as it is now. They need to learn all they can, and sometimes that's not enough. And remember one thing, they live in the greatest country in the world. They need to treasure our flag and treasure this country.